What's up, it's Kyra. Welcome back to the channel. We're doing another deck generated by Urza's AI. This time it's a mono blue deck. So let's get to it. Let's rate these cards, see if they're going to be playable in our favorite formats. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up. It's free. It supports the channel and consider subscribing for more. Let's go. First up is Siege Construct. Artifact creature, two generic mana for a 2-2. It can't attack unless defending player controls an island. Okay, so it's a blocker unless they have an island, but then it can't attack for two? It's still not that impressive, and it can tap the tap target creature defending player controls. Not constructed playable, not very good. The art is actually really cool because it is kind of a siege construct that's built on top of an island, so it does get the island flavor in there. Flavor text is from your small fleet, your chosen soldiers training prepared them for any contingency. That's pretty cool. Um, you, I mean, even sideboarding that in, against a player that's playing islands is not good though. Let's move on. Next up is Liftoff. Seven mana for an artifact creature, Gorgon. That art is amazing. That looks like something out of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. It's a three, four for seven. As long as it's your turn, Liftoff can't be blocked. That's pretty cool. As long as it's not your turn, you control no other artifacts. <laughs> So it doesn't matter how many artifacts you control, you only control one, and that's Liftoff. Liftoff demands the entire spotlight. It's like, listen, if I'm going to be on your team, I am the only artifact when it's not your turn. When it's your turn, that's fine. I'll go in, I'll be unblockable, but when it's not your turn, I'm the only one. One blue, one generic Liftoff deals four damage to target creature in blue. So yeah, a really high cost of seven, but it's a three, four unblockable, it Stops you from controlling artifacts on your turn if that matters. And then you can tap one blue and one generic as many times as you want. Because it doesn't have to tap the creature to deal four damage to our creature. That's a pretty good card. I like it. Flavor text is she sails where no one has ever set foot. Cool. Next we have Veridim control one blue, two generic for an enchantment aura. It enchants a creature. When enchanted creature attacks, tap it and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. This is pretty bad. This costs three, and then the creature has to attack. So what about all kinds of creatures that like to just sit on the battlefield and just block, and that they have static abilities that you don't want to attack with them? This is a pretty bad uh, pretty bad card. What's the flavor? To one person, Veridum is the Ethereal Calling, the Heaving Shoal. To another, it is the bleak, despairing echo of days lost to storm and flood. Yeah, I mean, I was just talking to my friend the other day, and I was like, to me, Veridum's the Ethereal Calling. And he's like, nah. It's the bleak, despairing echo of days lost to storm and flood. Yeah, to each their own. Next up is Saltmarsh Cutthroat, one blue, two generic for a human pirate at 1-3 Island Walk. Whenever Saltmarsh Cutthroat deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Okay, um, pretty weak unless your opponent has an island. Even then, it deals one damage and draws you a card every turn. It, that's a cool ability, don't get me wrong, but I would like to see this cost two instead of three, especially... Because it's conditional unblockability with Island Walk. Uh, if they're not having an island, it's not a good creature. When Sutcliffe sniffs out a secret treasure, he'll hide the bounty. He won't give up the spot without a fight. I guess Sutcliffe is the name of the Saltmarsh Cutthroat. Yeah, pretty cool looking art. Next is Abra Exploration Company. One blue, three generic for a gin. Doesn't really look like a gin, but maybe it's a shapeshifter gin that takes the form of like some sort of like a uh, boat company. It's a 3-3 flyer. You can tap one blue, one generic to reveal a top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, put it into your graveyard. It's actually kind of a cool creature. First off, 3-3 flying for four is not terrible. And then having the ability to do this, it doesn't cause it to tap to reveal a top card of your library. All creatures go into your hand. Otherwise, put it into your graveyard. You could pair this with something with flashback or something that, you know, graveyard interactions. Maybe you're playing... Um, Sultai or something like that. It's not bad. In in a certain deck, this would be pretty cool. I don't know. I still don't know if it's a gin like shipyard. Ancient Tablet. Three generic mana artifact. When it comes in, choose a color. Tap it to add one mana of the chosen color. Okay. Pretty cool. Mana rock for every single color. Whatever. Cost three. I think that's pretty much the going rate. Soul Ring costs, what, two? Oh, I'm making such a bad mistake by not knowing what Soul Ring costs. Is it one? And it makes a colorless mana? So this doesn't have any special abilities or cycling or anything like that, so it's just fine. Flavor text is, after millennia we return. See how much has changed, yet still remains the same. Tarka, Oriz Orizka, Heretic. Next is Heat Tolerance. One island, three generic for a sorcery searcher library for a plains or an island card, put it into the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. 
four mana at sorcery speed, it's not good. The art's kind of cool. The name is cool. Flavor text is every part of you from the hands to the eyes to the soul is saturated with mana. And it loves that I love it. Okay. Tim was at Emerald Angel said that creepy uh, heat tolerance. That's a cool art, though. Next is Defiant Interventionist. One blue, two generic for a wall. It's a three. <laughs> it's a three-two wall that can't block, but it also can't attack. Because I think by rules, the definition it doesn't have defender, but I think by definition, walls still can't attack. Just going by the old rules. Let me know what you think in the comments. Can this wall attack? I don't think it can. So it literally is a three-two three-drop that can't attack or block, and just counts as a creature if you have an effect that says like X creatures. It can be sacrificed, I guess. Uh, flavor text is Thyston scholars determined that many adversaries might prefer to deal with another faction if the job required they face a wall. Listen, I know you want this thing done, but um, if there's going to be any walls on this project, I mean, it, literally, if I go into that building and I see a wall, I'm going to another company. Next is Undergrowth Colossus, five generic mana for a 2-4. Artifact Creature Shapeshifter. One generic mana. The next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. That's pretty powerful because it doesn't have to tap. You can do that as many times as you want. So you cast this on turn five. Your opponent attacks you with a bunch of things. And you just kind of keep mana open and then fog their combat every turn. Just like, oh, you're hitting me with three creatures. I tap three mana. I stop all that damage. Pretty cool little card. It's an under, I mean, it's a 2-4 for 5. It's super underpowered. It's not really good as a creature or a attacker or whatever, but it's like a fog colossus. Flavor is he turned to her, twirling the fine white filaments into another shape. The misty clouds were fast disappearing as she swirled the ethereal mist to the creature's height, and a tiny twig turned into the muscular frame of a sylvan champion. Sounds cool. I have no idea what it means, but that's pretty cool. Parallax Wall, 5 generic mana, it's a wall, it's a 4-7 for 5, uh, Defender, 1 generic mana, 1 white, 1 black, draw a card. So it's just like a big wall that absorbs damage and draws you cards, it's not, costs a lot. Uh, so if we think 5 mana, that's getting us uh, 11, 11 stats combined with power and toughness. So like when you combine that with a, or compare that to a five drop creature, you want it to be like a five, five and it can attack and this draws cards, but it doesn't, it also costs mana. Not a very good wall. Flavor is when all its mana value was drawn, it suddenly sprang open and towered over all of Adumar. It looks like a nuclear power plant to me. And like the sky looks a little funky. I'm not sure this wall is doing great things for the environment. Aggressive in blue. One blue, two generic for an enchantment aura. At the beginning of your upkeep, tap enchanted creature and untap that creature. So this would be like in a very specific deck where your creature is like, when this untaps, something happens, right? And then you, you have it untapped, do that thing. Then you tap it again to pay for something and then it untaps again, tappy tappy, right? It would have to be something to do with that. But I mean, like just generally, like say in like a limited format, is a terrible, terrible card. But this strikes me as something that you could do like an infinite combo with, pairing it with a creature that taps and untaps to have effects. Flavor is they went down with their helmets over their eyes, stinging. Inertial barrier, a lot of walls. It's a three generic mana, zero four defender, two blue, one generic draw card. This is better than the other wall. The other wall can actually kill things, but this it comes down earlier, it blocks damage, it draws you cards. Still not good though. I would think for this to be good, it would be a 3-drop, 0-4 defender. Maybe just cut it to, like, 2 blue to draw a card. So that way it limits it to being played in mono blue, really. But it makes it cheaper so you can draw a card on turn 4 and hold up a counter spell. That would be pretty cool. Flavor is no greater hero shall come to Dunwich, for no better have laid Dunwich low. I really like the art, Inertial Barrier. It does strike me as some sort of artifact thing. It's really cool. It's fitting. Needle Siphon, 4 mana for an artifact, 2 generic mana tap it to tap target artifact creature or land. This are like an icy manipulator type of effect. You put this out, doesn't have an effect immediately, and you can tap something down every turn. This would be okay in like really slow formats, but a 4 mana do nothing and then invest 2 mana to tap something every turn is not great. Um, 
Flavor text is sometimes all you need is the thread. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I guess that's true. I don't... I don't know if we're talking about knitting here. Oh, needle siphon? Uh, I get it. Okay, I'm with you now. Glass Slitherer. One blue, two generic for a turtle beast. Island walk, again. This deck loves to play against other blue uh, blue base decks. It's a 2-2 two, two for three, has island walk. Whenever Glass Slitherer deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Yeah, I mean, sideboard this in against another blue deck and then just start hitting and then putting counters on it. It's fine. I wish it cost two. Three for a 2-2 two, two that just gets, like, killed is not really that cool. But the art is awesome. Looks like there's some sort of a sloth behind the turtle. And then there's, like, a dark crystal next to it. And it's just kind of, like, ethereal and weird. I like it a lot. Flavor text is some slitherers turn their shells over to pick the juiciest bugs. But the more likely explanation is that their leathery hide can withstand their master's unmerciful blows. Who's abusing the turtles on the turtle farm? I don't like that. Master Key. Two generic mana artifact. Tap it to add a colorless mana. Tap it to add blue or red. It deals one damage to you. That's kind of a cool design. It's like a pain land in artifact form. It costs two. You can add a colorless, but if you really need a blue or red, it deals one damage to you. This would be kind of cool to include... Maybe in like a limited deck that's like a mid-range to a slower deck where you have a lot of blue cards, but then you have something with a kicker of red or some sort of like pay red to have an effect. You could get that red mana out of it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I like it. Master Key, flavor, everything. Uh, what's the flavor text? No more Rao flights. Keep that Master Key to yourself. Oh, I will. Volcanic Unrest. One blue, two generic for an instant. Until end of turn, up to two target creatures each get plus two, plus two. And gain tap. This creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. This is a weird card. So this is kind of like a combat trick if you need it to be. In blue, which is kind of sweet because you, you normally see these in like red or green. Uh, plus two, plus two for two different creatures. You attack, you play this, you win combats. Or... They attack you, you play this, you give your things plus two, plus two, block where appropriate, and then have another creature deal damage to a target creature. So it's kind of versatile. The only thing is you have to have two creatures on board. If they wipe all your creatures and you have like zero to one creatures and you draw this, like it's not going to be very good. But I can see situations where this is pretty good. Flavor text is Tides of Change Breed Ferocity. Animander Rake. Next is Orin Reef. Three generic artifact creature mirror. It's a 3-3 three, three for three at the beginning of combat. On your turn, each player sacrifices a creature they control. This is a pretty powerful card. You build this with black, I guess. Not in this deck. This is kind of a weird place for it. But you build this in black or white where you generate like a token every turn, like a 0-1 Thopter or a 1-1 Human or something. And then it becomes asymmetrical. So you sack that little thing, and they sack something they paid mana for, and over time, this sort of, like, degrades their board state. Kind of a cool card. Uh, flavor is, once Eranos attacked and almost succeeded in setting a smoldering swamp ablaze, the enemy survived by digging trenches and posting sentries. That's the story of the Orin Reef. Next, we have Living Nightmare, two generic mana. Look at that art. That actually does look like something out of my nightmares. Uh, an artifact, as island power enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. Two, tap, choose a color of your choice. Creatures you control of the chosen color get plus two, plus, uh, plus one, plus one till end of turn. I guess you're going to be choosing blue if this is in this deck. I don't know what island power is. I'm assuming it's not just a land. Like, I'm going to cast this blue creature and to do so I'll use island power powered by islands. Or maybe island power is like a 10 drop, 10 blue spell. But when it comes to the battlefield, you choose an opponent and nothing. It's like Pokemon. You're like, I choose you. Okay, cool. Your turn. Uh, Flavors Meltdown runs on batteries in both the minds of its creators and the wizards wielding it. Meltdown runs on batteries. Sounds sort of philosophical, but it's about as unhinged as this art. Um, yeah, it's... No. Not very good. It's like a crappy banner effect next is thorn watch vigilant three generic mana for a cat looks kind of like an owl to me but um it says cat when thorn watch vigilant dies you gain three life it's a two three every kithkin here has a spot near the warm stone chimney a warm soft bedroll to cuddle in why would any kithkin need more catapult crone sword 
Not much to see here. Fine. Gains your life when it dies. Limited card. Cool. Next is Scholar of History. One blue, three generic for a Vidalcan Wizard. It's a 2-2-4 two, two, drop when you cast an artifact spell, draw a card. Put it in your deck where you cast a lot of artifacts. I wish it cost three, not four. It's a little bit late for that. But yeah, it could pay you off. Maybe draw you a couple cards. Whatever. Flavor text is Knowing History. My family did not fight at Rillier. Wait, isn't that where Cthulhu is from? Rillier? Let me know in the comments. I think that's like a Lovecraftian world. They just passed on what they had learned. Pretty sure that's what that's from. Steel Wind Hyena. Look at that art. That is sick. I love that. That's like some hyena out of like a Terminator lore. Three generic for a cyborg golem. It's a 3-2 three, for three. It has haste. As long as it's your turn, Steel Wind Hyena has first strike. Beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one, plus one counter on Steel Wind Hyena. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. This is a great creature. It's It can be played in any deck. I don't know kind of why it's in this blue deck. It's hyper aggressive. So you play this. Packs for three. It's a 3-2 haste. You get in. Next turn, it's a 4-3. And keep going. Very good. Love Steel Wind Hyena. Love the name. Love the art. Love the creature type. Love the abilities. Flavor text is, its life is dependent on how quickly it learns new tricks. <laughs> I love this card. This is great. Next is Sprite Guide. 2 blue, 4 generic for human wizard. 2, 4 for 6 drop. When Sprite Guide enters the battlefield, scry 2. And no, no thank you. Uh, flavor is when someone gives him an elf as a present, he puts it in a lead box. Moldrak, Nexus of Frustration. Well, Frustration being in blue is super fitting. One blue, Elemental, zero, three. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a minus one, minus one counter on Moldrak, Nexus of Frustration. Tap one blue mana, two generic, it deals two damage to any target. <clears throat> no. That should be, so that's downside and has an expensive ability. Play this on turn one, it blocks a thing. Next turn it's a zero, two. Then you have to wait even another turn to even get two damage out of it. And it costs you a total of four mana investment. Then this thing just dies. No, that is frustrating, Moldrak. Get the hell out of here. In a distant and terrifying land on a shimmering field of nothingness, he ruled. Yeah, nothingness is where you'll remain, Moldrak. Next is Calming Touch, two generic mana for an artifact. One, tap it. Put a soothing mythic seal counter on Calming Touch. One, tap it. Target creature gains flying till in the turn. So the second ability, two drop that for one mana can give something flying. It's that's kind of cool. You could use it to block flyers, too. Uh, the first one is a Soothing Mythic Seal Counter. I've been Mythic in, on, on Arena. It doesn't seem soothing to me. Maybe this is a new thing. Flavor is a river runs forever. It cannot be crossed in one day. Words of wisdom from the AI. That's very true. I like that flavor a lot. Um, I would like some Mythic Seal Counters. I don't know what they do, but I would like those. Malicious Offering. One blue, two generic for an enchantment. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you gain one life. This seems like a white enchantment to me. A little bit overcosted too. Like this to cost one or two. Um, flavor text is just a vision of grandeur. Yeah, pretty mediocre card. But like a vision of grandeur, I'm looking at like an oil refinery that has blown up and is in flames. Like, um, yeah, and the water's like black with oil. Maybe it's Phyrexian oil, and they're saying the Phyrexian has a vision of grandeur, and this is it. Sure, grandeur means different things to different people. Who am I to judge? But it's also a malicious offering. I, I, yeah, it's it's pretty complex. Oil refinery life gain card. Next is Mist Rattlesnake. Look at that guy. Just flying through the trees. He's a one blue bird soldier. Bird snake. One one flying one blue, two generic against first strike till in a turn. Not sure how relevant first strike is going to be. Usually you want to have your 1-1 one, one flyers just hitting people, not um, other uh, other player or uh, other creatures. But yeah, 1-1 one, one flyer, I guess, for one. The birds on Harada Beach would kill an elephant in one great gulp. That sounds terrifying. Plus the weirdness that it's a bird rattlesnake, but it's also a soldier snake bird thing. So it's like trained right and it comes out of the mist it's really, actually really terrifying 
Marasa Marauder, three mana for a mere artifact creature, one, two, Island Walk, again, this is the anti-blue deck, blue deck, and as long as you control an island, it has plus one, plus zero in Island Walk, so it has double Island Walk, so if somebody says, this card revokes Island Walk, and you're like, aha, but I control an island, so it has Island Walk again, and plus one, plus zero, mm, <laughs> no. When you wake a savage marauder from her sleep, expect more than just morning raids. Resolute Order. This art is really, really cool. I like it a lot. Um, four generic mana. It looks like somebody's climbing up a hill to plant a flag or something, but there's some sort of energy complex thing and like a swirling ocean around it. It's so maybe shoot up to the sky or something like that. It's really cool. Artifact, one generic, tap it, create a 1-1 one, one colorless mirror artifact creature token with trample. I love that the 1-1 one, one colorless mirror has trample. I guess if you have a bunch of effects on the battlefield, it's like all creatures get plus one, plus one. That trample could have an effect. But it costs four. And it just, you have to, I don't know. I guess. I wish it cost like three. Uh, flavor is every person, even the wicked, belongs to the Lanes of Asylum. I'm just going to assume that that construct on top of the mountain is called the Lanes of Asylum. That's pretty cool. I like the flavor. Haunted Artifact with A-R-T-E-F-A-C-T. -E Two generic mana for an artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a graveyard, <laughs> create a 1-1 one, one black zombie creature token. Is there a card that says your opponent, exile your opponent's graveyard and take their graveyard away from them. Like, oh, I no longer have a place to put my cards that died. I guess they just exiled themselves. So this is essentially a two mana artifact that beginning of your upkeep, make a one, one black zombie, which would actually pair really well with that uh, Orin Reef earlier. So that's what I'm talking about. You play this on turn two, make yourself a zombie, play Orin Reef, sack that zombie every single turn. You're playing against aggro. You're making them sacrifice their creatures. We do have some synergies in this deck. Flavor text is he wondered if it would feel the same, all claws and thrashings, but in truth, it had lost the substance of its original self. Uh, you know, sometimes whenever you look back on the past and you think about magical moments like your first true love and you're like, man, I miss those claws and thrashings. I wonder if my next relationship will feel the same. <sighs> no, just lost all the substance of the original self of those claws and thrashings. Impending Doom. Look at that art. That's sick. One blue, two generic. That looks like Impending Doom. Sorcery. All creatures get minus three, minus three till end of turn. That's a nice blue board wipe. Surprising uh, thing. It's not black. It's not white. It's blue, minus three, minus three. So you can play this in a mono blue deck and people open their board out and you're like, yeah, I'm safe. They're going to like bounce something or whatever. They don't have any board wipes in here. Think again. Impending Doom. An Elder Khan bides his time until the mists rise again. Yosai, Yokoi, Bloodletter. That's cool art. And we're back to Siege Construct. I read the text again and I was like, can't attack unless defending player controls an island. We just have so many of these cards, but it looped back around. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel for more videos. And let me know what your favorite card was in the comments. I had a few, but I think Orin Reef and the two two or the two drop that makes a one-one zombie if you control a graveyard is a cool little synergy there. And that uh bird soldier snake mist thing is terrifying. So until next time, take care.